So today's video is going to be a little different than what I've done today. So far, I've done videos about all the positive aspects of the, the 2024 Coachman Cross Trail Extreme. And there are a lot of them, far more positives than there are negatives. But after having it as long as we've had and been on the road and driven as many miles and stayed in as many places, there are some negatives. And there are 10 that I'm going to outline in this video that I'm hoping Cross Trail is paying or Coachman is paying attention to um, and would consider making some changes to. A lot of these we've already modified and I've talked about in some other videos. So we're going to talk about my top 10 list of things I wish Coachman would change. And my feeling is over time they definitely will because if you look at the 2023 models compared to the 2024, there are massive changes and huge improvements. Uh, and I think they have to because there's a lot of competition in this market, this Class B plus or Class C, however you want to look at it. Um, you know, there are a lot of innovations going on uh, in this model. And I think Coachman is still leading those. But there's a few areas they need to work on. And we're going to start with number one, and that is the exhaust fans. So this model, the 20XG, has three exhaust fans. Uh, and this one is in the bathroom, and this is the last one we haven't changed over to the Max Air fans. These fans are awful. Um, I would go so far as calling them junk for a couple of reasons. That noise is one. The second one is they really don't move much air. So for those two reasons, we really hate these fans. Now what you see here is the new Max Air fan, and I'll turn that on. And that's on, I think, speed two there. Three, four. As you can see, this thing really moves some air. Now on the first speed, it barely makes any noise at all. You don't even know that it's on. So these fans are about $200 if you order them off Amazon from Max Air. Uh, and it takes about 90 minutes to install them. If you want the dealer to do it, they want about $700 for them. So that's my number one issue. We've changed two of them, one more to go. Number two absolutely has to be this sink. Now, this is not obviously the original sink. You're going to have to go back and look at some earlier videos to see what that is. It is silver. It is shallow. It is virtually useless. Um, now, I understand cost is an issue, weight is an issue, and this was not a very light sink, nor was it a very cheap sink. But because it is such a centerpiece in the RV, we did splurge. It was at Lowe's, it was almost $300, but it was the exact size that we needed uh, considering the under sink space that you have and the plumbing you have, this was a great buy. Now the next item, again, you don't see here, but in the earlier videos, or if you go look at new ones, you'll see the backsplash is basically a little sticker that goes around the side from there to there. Uh, and they have these little mini blinds up there, neither of which are very useful at all. So we installed these stick and peel stone backsplash. Again, it does add a little weight, very little expense. And um, Sherry installed this and she's pretty good. So you can see the corners look really, really nice and fit it in there. And it looks like it came with it. Uh, it's one of our favorite things about this and probably one of our favorite mods that we've done. Um, we do have a little bit of Velcro, if you can see right there. And so we just have a little uh, piece of material that we put up there that's a blackout when we need it. Otherwise, you don't really need those little mini blinds. The next item we have is not maximizing space. Underneath this bench seat, and actually that one as well, is a lot of mechanical like uh, your inverter and your charger and some other things like that. Well, with a little bit of movement, we created this space. This doesn't come with it. Uh, Coachman, again, hope you're watching. Move them over just a little bit and you've actually got a whole nother cabinet space that you can use right here. And we reused some uh, hinges there and I'll talk about hinges in a minute. Now, here's an item that actually did not make my little list, and that's this drawer right here. Before, this drawer swung down, and then you open the drawers inside. Sherry changed this to slide open, and it did that by attaching it to the bottom drawer. So when you slide it open, you actually open a drawer, and then you can open your next drawer. 
and then this isn't in your way. Before it was two steps. You drop this down and then pick which drawer you want to open and do that. But we reused the hinges that were on this for what I just showed you before in the lower um, storage cabinet. And again, just attached it to that. Put a magnet in there. And there you go. Yep, the horns are coming out. The next item we have on the list is exposed hinges. Not in here because we modified it, but in these two corners, you'll see a little balance, I guess, if you want to call it. But when you get them, basically, that's what you see. You don't need to see that, especially in your bedroom. Very, very lightweight, very easy to do. A um, couple of steps. Wouldn't take Coachman much, much at all to get that done. And it looks much better than looking at the hinges. Next item on the list is locks. So we're outside to look at this one. Um, very cheap, inexpensive locks. Uh, we haven't upgraded and changed this one yet, but we have upgraded and changed these. You can see here that lifts up and we've got a, a completely different style of key to open those. Um, what came before is basically the same lock system that comes on every other RV. So any RV owner has got your key. Now, while we're on the outside, we'll talk a little bit about the graphics, or lack thereof. When we purchased this, Coachman have it, had it covered in stickers and graphics and the Dalmatian, and we really didn't like the fonts, we didn't like the style. Uh, you know, this one we ordered off of Amazon and put it on there in just a few minutes. Uh, we think it adds to it instead it takes away from it. Um, so we took a lot of their graphics off. Next item on the list is the shower. Now you'll see now that this is a white shower. Uh, it was actually a lot of work to get it white. I think about four coats of a uh, whatever the stuff that was that Sherry used for this. Um, but it was like a fake marble looking thing, very dark. It, it just looked cheap and we didn't like it at all. This isn't the end product. It's just till we find exactly the surround that we want to have for this. Uh, but well, while we're in here in the shower, this is the other issue. This could be much better. This is like really cheap looking, cheap feeling, and it was installed poorly. We had a leak uh, back here. This is one of the things we went back to um, motorhome specialists for, take a look at. And it turns out they use PEX for wiring or for uh, plumbing the hot and cold water. And on the hot side, the PEX was cut a little bit too long. Rather than make it cut to fit, they just forced it, and in doing so, it eventually caused it to leak over time. Uh, so we had to get that repaired. Now the next item, and this is really irritating, is the hinges. Um, they're so stiff uh, that when you open the cabinet door, you have to hold it almost the whole time because it'll pop and jerk. And as you can see, uh, as in all RVs, uh, this is a lot of pressed wood. And over time, as it does that, it'll just yank them out of there. Uh, a lot of these are installed very, very tightly, and it strips the wood out a little bit. So we ended up having to move these hinges uh, because, in my opinion, they're just not the right uh, hinge for the job. Uh, and especially on these uh, cabinets, um, don't hold up well over time. So the final item on the list is going to be the TV placement. This is where we place the TV, and uh, I did another video on this modification. There is no TV here. It's in the bedroom, right above the bed, where you would want it uh, for really relaxing and enjoying TV. Um, they put one in the front. It's not a great location. It's difficult to watch it uh, from for more than one person at a time. Um, and this one was really easy to hang. Uh, again, using the brackets that uh, are holding the bed, which are rated for 800 pounds, you, we just put a 2x4 uh, inside behind that, mounted it, bolted it, and hung the TV from it. No problems whatsoever. Now, at this point, you might be saying to yourself, hey, those are a lot of pretty easy fixes and, and simple modifications, and for the most part, they are. Uh, so again, I hope Coachman is watching and that you continue to do exactly what you're doing which is uh, innovation in the market, uh, bringing new products, new processes, and all of those things. Um, but don't overlook your fans and your sinks and your things like that. Um, when, when people are on the, the dealership floor and going to the shows, that's what a lot of them are pointing out and looking at. And I think, I still believe that, that in the B-plus class, uh, especially those that want to be 
outside the RV parks and, and, and out in the national parks, this is the best thing on the market for the price today, uh, bar none. Um, just a few things that we can improve on. And as you can see, we've, we've improved on a lot of them here. Uh, but for the price point, I think they should come with nicer sinks and nicer fans and things like that. So that said, that's it. Thanks for watching.